Good morning. And welcome to worship at Ebenezer United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you're welcome here. It seems a little odd for me to welcome you here since I haven't been up here for uh, quite some time, since retiring uh, over three years ago. Uh, but it's great to be back. It's good to be back and, and uh, see so many familiar faces and some new faces and to know that uh, God keeps uh, helping the church to grow. And that's as it, as it should be. I hope that uh, by the end of our, our service uh, that I've become a familiar face, even if it's a new one for you today. As we gather for worship, we, we pray that God's Spirit would uh, move us to draw closer to God as well as to reach out to one another. We pray God's blessing upon our time together. I invite you to uh, stand as you join together with uh, Dar, our liturgist, in the call to worship. We join in thanking God for people who share roots dug deep in the soil of faith. Hardy spirits, rich in loving, strong for struggle, bold for toil. Still, we confess, we become distracted from grace and love has not prevailed. May Christ's spirit stir us to true hospitality, welcoming as sisters, brothers, all God's children on the earth. And then if you would join together in lifting up your voices for hymn number 376 from the New Century Hymnal, God, we thank you for our people. The words will be on the screen.
and if you would join me in prayer. Holy One, you came in Christ to reconcile the world to yourself. So may we become agents of your reconciling love. Yet there is so much within us and around us seeking to divide and destroy. We desperately need your grace, O God. Lead us on the path of love and hope, of unity and peace. Help us focus on loving in relationship with you, with one another, and all creation, setting aside every distraction from your grace. Open our eyes to see your kingdom so near. Amen. You may be seated. And at this time, we'll have our scripture reading, which comes from the Gospel of Luke, the 10th chapter, verses 38 to 42. It's the story of Jesus when he visits Martha and Mary. Now, as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. May God add a blessing to the reading and hearing of these words and our living of them. And at this time, if the children would come forward, Reverend Roger is going to lead us in the children's conversation. You want to come up and join me? It's, you're not going to get out of it that easily, because I'm just going to... I'll tell you the story from, from here then, if that's the way you want to be. Oh, here we go. Thank you for having the courage. That helped others to be able to come up, too. Oh, I love your brewer shirt. Do you like to play baseball? Do you? Do you like to play baseball? I have another question. Do you like to read? Yeah, your head shook just a little harder there. Do you like to read? Well, I have a story about my grandchildren. Two of my grandchildren live kind of far from here, but I get to see them once in a while. And um, they like to play baseball and they like to read. But my grandson Everett really likes to read. I have a kind of, I think, a funny story to tell about Everett. On his birthday, uh, his other grandma and grandpa and, and Nana and Papa uh, is what we call ourselves, and, and the aunts and uncles and cousins were all around, and we'd, we'd all brought presents for him for his birthday. And so he had this pile of presents, really kind of nice. And he started opening his, his birthday presents, and we're all uh, sitting around watching because we want to see the nice things that he's getting for his birthday. And partway through it, probably about maybe the third or fourth present, he still had quite a few to go, he opened a book. And it happened to be the newest book in a series that he really likes to read. And you know what he did? He opened a book and he started reading. He started reading. It was like the rest of us all sitting around him had just disappeared. All these presents that were there, they could, they could just sit there. He was so interested in reading that book, he didn't want to open the rest of his presents. Can you imagine that? I bet that's probably not ever happened to you. When you get presents at Christmas or sometime, what's the first thing you want to do? Open them, right? His sister, Emery, reads very well, but she'd much rather be playing baseball. 
She loves to be out, running the bases, hitting the ball just as hard as she can. Sometimes she gets to pitch, but not very often. Mostly she's playing, playing out on the bases, uh, first or, or third base. But she, she just loves to play baseball or to do anything else that's active. She's so athletic, she just loves that. She reads just fine. But she especially enjoys athletics. And it's interesting how different they are. They both read, they both play baseball, but they kind of enjoy one more than the other. And it's interesting because I was thinking about you and me, we're kind of a mix of all kinds of things. And maybe when I say, do you like to play baseball, you say, yeah. When I say, do you like to read, you say, yeah. It's different for all of us, isn't it? And God made us all different, and that's a wonderful thing. Would you like to, to pray with me? I'll say a part and you can say it after me. Thank you, God, for making us different and loving us, all of us, just the way we are. Help us show your love in all the ways we can. Amen. Thank you very much for coming up. As you can see, there's a basket over here. If you'd like to help yourself to something from the basket, just check with an adult before you open it, please. And then we get to be blessed by special music today. Thank you so much. I bow before your throne I bear the deepest part of me To you and you alone I keep no secrets for There is no thought you have not known I bring my best and all the rest To you and lay them down With all my heart, I want to love you, Lord, and live my life each day to know you more. All that is in me is yours completely. I'll serve you.
Thank you so much, Sue, for your singing, and Alan for your accompaniment of the entire service, for all the music you're sharing with us today. We are blessed. Perhaps the story of Mary and Martha is familiar to you, one that you've heard before. It is a short one. Dar thanked me for having a short scripture for, for her as liturgist today. But in those short verses, it's interesting that we sometimes, often it seems like in my experience, get the story all kind of twisted around, even though it's short. We tend to hear the story as Mary versus Martha. Even in Bible study this week, we fell into that pattern, as so often happens in thinking about and discussing this. Well, was Jesus saying, it's better to be Martha or it's better to be Mary? And it seems to me that when we do that, we miss what may be the more important point of the story. And that is that both Mary and Martha exhibit things that are a part of all of us and are important in our Christian living. When I first came to Ebenezer 22 years ago, whew, sounds like a long time, there was a women's group here at this church called the Mary Martha Circle. And I was glad that they called it that. It wasn't even Mary and Martha. It was Mary Martha. Like, those two names go together. And I wasn't around when the group began back in the late 50s and early 60s when uh, Joanne Grosich, whose husband, Reverend Reuben Grosich, was a pastor here at Ebenezer for 29 years. But I imagine that they made a point by choosing that name of making sure that in their time together, they would have time when they would focus on their faith, on their relationship with Jesus, and time that they would put that faith into action. Because both things are important in our Christian walk. If we get doing one and not the other, we get into trouble. If we get in, into um, just focusing on me and my relationship with Jesus and my faith, we become what some people have called uh, so heavenly minded that we're no earthly good. But, on the other hand, one of the things I've noted, and I think maybe we're especially susceptible to in the United Church of Christ, is sometimes we're so focused on doing, on putting our faith in action, on standing up for the things that need defending in this world, that we sometimes lose track of the foundation of our faith. And when we do that, sometimes we lose the energy and the sense of purpose and the focus that we need to keep on putting God's love into practice in the way we live, in our own lives, in our life together, and our reaching out to the world, how important it is. Important to remember that both of these things are in us. It's really a story about us, not about Mary or Martha. And yet there's such a tendency, it seems, in us as human beings, I guess from the very beginning, but certainly in the world around us, to divide and to look at, is it one or the other? Things become good people and bad people, them and us, insiders and outsiders, and all other kinds of ways that we get divided, don't we? You don't have to look very far in the daily news to be able to see how that expresses itself in our life in this country and in the world. I'm reminded of a saying that my grandmother had that expresses a lot of truth and it was an important message for me then and has stuck with me all these years. She used to say there's so much good in the worst of us and so much bad in the best of us, that it little behooves any of us to speak ill of the rest of us. Perhaps you had a grandmother who said that too. <laughs> or perhaps it just rings true. It's an important reminder for us 
that we're a mix ourselves. When we look at our own lives, we're a mix of good and bad. And so is everybody else. And yet we tend to categorize and say, oh, they're all like that. Oh, they're all like this. That kind of division and distraction is destructive to our life together. We can see that in the story. When Martha is busy, apparently in the kitchen, at least that's how I picture her. It doesn't specifically say what she was busy about, but she was busy doing things to, to welcome her guests in her home, and she gets distracted by her busyness. Some of us know how that works. Just saying. She gets distracted by her busyness, and it so kind of churns in her that it separates her from her sister. Her sister. We're not talking some stranger. This is her own flesh and blood, her sister. And she's just, the more she thinks about it, the angrier she gets. It separates her not only from her sister, but also from Jesus. She's getting angry at Jesus. Jesus, don't you care? that my sister's left me to do everything in the kitchen all by myself? So when Jesus says, Martha, Martha, calm down. You're doing an important thing. You're putting your love into action, but you've lost sight of that. It's become a burden that you resent. Mary's busy focusing on these moments that she has with her Savior. She'll probably help you with the dishes. Now, the scripture doesn't say that, but I'm just... Perhaps that's what Jesus said. Or maybe Jesus went out to help. No, I'm not going to go there. But this whole thing of divisions that distract us from the relationships that are such an important part of our life, family, faith, these are important things in this home. And they're getting lost in the shuffle because of the divisions. And yet, St. Paul says in the New Testament, he says, God was coming in Jesus to reconcile the world to God and calling us to be ambassadors of that reconciliation, to help to draw people together. That's what we're called to do as Christians. There's an old story, and I tried to track down the, the source of it, and it goes in so many directions that I spent way too much time on that. I don't think it really matters who started the story or where it came from, but it's a story about an old man who's talking to a younger child and says, you know, inside of me there are two wolves, and they're fighting at each other. And the young one says, which one wins? And the old man says, it depends on which one I feed. For the purposes of our thoughts today, think about those two wolves inside of us as the wolf of division and dividing and a wolf of reconciling and bringing together. And those two are battling each other inside of us, all of us. And it depends on which one we feed. Which wolf is getting fed inside of you, inside of me? Stop and think about it as you listen to some of the news commentary. There's an awful lot in the world these days that seems to be feeding the division in us, pitting us one against another. And it begs the question, as I'm preparing for our time together today, Who's gaining from all of that? I'm not going to try and answer it. But I suspect that, as often is the case, it has to do with money or power. 
maybe both. Somebody is working hard to feed our divisions because they sure at least feel to me a whole lot more intense than they did when I was much younger. People have always disagreed. We always had Democrats and Republicans. I knew exactly which was which in my home. But not as venomous as things are now. It calls on us as Christians to feed the wolf of reconciling, of bringing people together, of seeing that we are all a mix, that the other person isn't all bad and we're all good, of seeing that each one is created in the image of God. However much that image may have gotten distracted and lost along the way, somewhere deep inside it's still there. And as we begin to be able to see that in each other, it makes a difference in our life together. It makes a difference, I believe, not only in our life with one another, but in the way we treat God's creation. We often don't refer to it as God's creation, do we? We think of it as nature, kind of anonymous. And therefore, nature becomes natural resources for us to use however we choose to or to abuse, if the case may be. What happens if we get back to thinking about this world of which we're a part as God's creation? And we're called to be stewards, to take care of it in the ways that God would intend. What happens if we live with one another in ways of caring for each other? I thought about, because I always preach a sermon to myself first, I'm not going to ask you to do anything that I'm not willing to ask myself to do. And I thought, so who's the person I have the most trouble and it's a long list. <laughs> Perhaps the leader of a country that's currently at war. Because where do wars begin? They begin with this whole thing of divisions, don't they? That distract us from what God has called us to be. And somehow I believe it's purely by the grace of God, because it's not in me. But I have been able to pray for this leader of this country that I can't find much visible good in, the man. Pray for him not to succeed in his war, but for God to heal whatever is broken inside, whatever has gotten distracted from what God may have intended for this person in his creation. And I believe that my prayer makes a difference in me. I hope it makes a difference in him. I trust God to do that because I think it's something that God alone is going to have to fix. But I know it's made a difference in me to be able to back off of my division and be able to see God has created us all to care for one another. Diana Butler Bass tells a story of being in Washington, D.C. She's riding the subway and gets off the subway. She goes up a long escalator to get out of the subway tunnel. And ahead of her on this escalator going up, there's a, an older man who starts to lose his balance and actually falls backwards on the escalator and lands on the escalator right in front of her. And you know how, what escalators are like. They're not padded. And so he's, got, he's bleeding immediately uh, as he's laying there on the steps, and they continue to move up. 
And she immediately calls out for help because she realizes she's not going to be able to deal with this herself. And almost Im immediately, there's a young man who comes up, and the two of them are able to lift the man up enough when they get to the top of the escalator to be able to keep him from getting caught, you know, in the thing that's going on. And they, they help him over to a bench. And by this time, several others are, are coming around and, and helping as well. Uh, there's, there's someone who has a, a, a water bottle. And, and brings that over, offering him uh, a drink of the water. Uh, there's a guy from a nearby cafe who comes with some napkins to be able to try and blot some of the, the bleeding. And he has no serious injuries, I guess, but certainly is bleeding a lot and, and quite shaken by this experience. And so others have gathered around. Somebody pulls out their phone and they call uh, 911. They get the rescue squad there to, to help him. And they, they check him over when, when they get there. And he, by this time, is kind of calming down, and they've, they've slowed down the bleeding, and, and so he's doing somewhat better, and with a little help, he's able to get up and to walk on his own and, and to go, go on his way, thanking everybody around, and, and they're all shaking hands with each other. Nobody knows each other's names. Nobody knows who each other is. But they've all joined together in common purpose to help this man when he needed help. And she said, you know, the story is all the more remarkable for where it happened. Of all the places in this country, perhaps there's none that's more divided politically than Washington, D.C. And yet none of us checked with each other to find out what our politics was at the moment. That took a back step. That no longer was distracting us from the focus at hand was helping a fellow human being in time of need. If that can happen on a subway escalator in Washington, D.C., can it happen here in Sheboygan, Wisconsin? Maybe in this church, I pray, in this country, in this world, we can stop being distracted by our divisions and live in the grace of God, showing that grace and that love in all the ways we can. May God bless us as we do. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able as we join together in singing, Won't You Let Me Be Your Servant, number 539 in the New Century Hymnal. The words will also be on the screen.
There are many ways to help support the ministry of Ebenezer Church and the work that God is doing through this church in the world. Some prefer to bring their gifts to the offering plates by the exits from the sanctuary today. Uh, some give electronically, some go to the website and uh, do it there. There's a drop box uh, out in front of the church door, so there are many opportunities to do that to uh, fit different lifestyles and preferences. We appreciate all the support uh, that makes the ministry of this church possible. I invite you to join together uh, in the offertory prayer and you know, leading into the Lord's Prayer from the screen. Generous and gracious God, what would it mean if we asked you to dedicate not only the gifts we give to the church, but all the rest that we keep, that we hold back? What if we lived as those whose every dollar, every talent, every hour was dedicated to making kindness, mercy, and justice the norm, and not the exception? What would it mean if we really saw the places where indifference causes pain, hardship, and harm to souls, bodies, and creation itself? Help us to make this more than speculation, but the reality of an offering of our whole being. We pray in the name of our Lord, who taught us to pray when we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We take a little time to focus on our life together. If there are those who have announcements uh, to share, if you would come forward at this time. I was asked by Laura Henning Lorenz to remind you of the um, opportunity Ebenezer has to uh, help serve at the stock car races on Saturday, July 30th. Uh, as of the uh, Thursday night, she said she still needed 16 people for that. Uh, so some help is needed if it's all possible for you to be a part of that out at the uh, fairgrounds in Plymouth on July 30th. Uh, that would be very much appreciated. There's a sign-up sheet uh, in the gathering area. Sue? Oh. Hiding over here. Hiding behind the flowers. <laughs> Good morning. I'm Tom Ott. Uh, most of you probably know who I am. Uh, two announcements for you. One, uh, I'm privileged to be part of a musical production that's being performed in Plymouth. Uh, it funny thing happened on the way to Nineveh. It's a, a wonderful musical that Reverend Jim Hopper wrote during his sabbatical in 2017. Uh, if you got nothing else to do this afternoon at two o'clock, I invite you to come and have a good time. It's a wonderful production. Uh, second off, uh, we'll have karaoke. Next Sunday from 1.30 to 4.30 over here in the Fellowship Hall, if you sing well, if you don't sing so well, or you don't sing at all, you're more than welcome to be there, and it's usually a fun afternoon for everyone that comes, so thanks. Good morning, everyone. I have a wise um, update. Uh, first of all, I, I did want to go back to a comment that was made um, a few weeks ago. In January of 2021, we voted as a congregation to become wise. So just a little reminder that that means we're all part of a wise team. Today, the planning group of our wise team, our congregational wise team, is meeting in Fellowship Hall. If you have time, please join us. We're gonna be talking about the upcoming events for this year. And also, if you're interested at all in the WISE team, you know, in, the, in, in becoming part of that planning group and taking part in anything, please join us or reach out. If you can't make it today, let us know and we'll make sure that we um, include you in the loop when we plan our next get together. Um, also on that vein of, of WISE, being WISE, if you didn't know, um, yesterday, they announced the National Suicide Hotline number, 988. 
So make sure that you have that pegged in your phone or that you remember it. It's there anytime anyone needs it. Um, please utilize it if you know that you have somebody near you that um, could use that resource. Um, and then also, cookies. Cookies, cookies, cookies. Not the kind on your computer, but the kind we eat. Um, I have two events that I'd like to announce the need for cookies for. The first event is not an Ebenezer event. It's an event for the organization I work for, Lighthouse, which is a recovery community center in downtown Sheboygan. Each of us recovery coaches, which is what I do at that facility, are, we are going back to our home churches and asking for cookies for an August 27th Overdose Awareness Day. Um, we're going to be using the cookies for both a two o'clock meal and like a six o'clock meal, so we could use lots. There's a sign-up sheet on the comma counter. Also, cookies are needed for Ebenezer's rummage sale that's going to happen at the beginning of October. Again, sign-up sheet is on the counter. If you're willing to bake ahead of time, like even now, and get an ice cream gallon bucket of, um, that you could freeze cookies in, if you freeze them warm, they taste just as good when we unfreeze them later. Anybody, anybody's help would be greatly appreciated for both of those events. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Sue. I like cookies. <laughs> and that reminds me to remind you that you have the opportunity for the Simplified Comma Cafe following our services this summer. Uh, so we invite you to, to the fellowship hall to be a part of that. Uh, and rumor has it that there will be cookies uh, and something to drink. But most of all, a time to reconnect with each other uh, and express the carrier of Christ in our life together. I invite you, as you're able, to stand and join together in singing our closing hymn, Let Us Talents and Tongues Employ, number 347, in the New Century Hymnal. <laughs> I invite you to reach out as you're comfortable, perhaps with a hand, perhaps with an elbow, at least with a smile, as we join together in the Alleluia benediction.
May the love of God, our Creator, the grace in Christ Jesus, our Savior, and the presence and power of the Holy Spirit be with us all today and always. Amen.